A few months ago, we were sent the Miki 12mm T2.2 cinema lens to review for T-Stop gear. Now we've been sent the Miki 35mm T2.2 cinema lens, the newest lens in Miki's ever-expanding range of cinema glass. If you've already seen our review of the 12mm, you'll know that we looked in-depth at the build quality of the Miki lenses. For this review, we'll just have a quick recap. The lens comes with a standard rear micro four thirds lens cap, and on the front, a nice snap-on plastic cap. This lens has a full metal construction with focus and aperture rings geared for cinema use with measurements in meters and in feet and clear markings for the T-stops. Thanks to the stopless aperture, if you need to adjust the exposure during the shot, this can be done seamlessly. The focus ring, which has a 270 degree rotation, is geared and silky smooth and therefore perfect to be used with a follow focus system. Unlike the 12mm, which was micro four thirds only, this lens not only comes in micro four thirds, but in Sony E mount and Fuji X mount, giving full coverage on an APS C or Super 35 sensor. One of the things that impressed us most with the 12mm was the focus breathing, and the 35mm is no different. The focus breathing on this lens is excellent, with almost zero movement even during long focus pulls. Given that a 35mm is a more telephoto lens length on micro four thirds, bokeh and shallow depth of field are far more noticeable when shooting with this lens. Shooting wide open, the lens has a lovely milky quality to the bokeh. When discussing this lens, most people will say this is a 70mm, because they will be using full frame as their point of reference. But the field of view is the only thing that changes in every other respect, this is still a 35mm lens in terms of near focusing and the field of focus. The lens's near focusing is 1.7 feet, which means you can place this lens very close to the action and still retain focus. Many people coming from a full frame background are often worried that T2.2 lens on micro four thirds won't give them enough shallow depth of field. However, shooting with this lens, it's possible to get a quite interesting and creamy bokeh even at T4 and 5.6. The secret with this lens is framing and how you place objects and people within that frame. The flaring and chromatic aberration on this lens is comparable with that seen on previous Miki cinema lenses. The flares are generally soft and organic and can be used to create some interesting effects. When the 12mm was launched many people were worried because the body of the lens was slightly shorter than the 16 and 25mm. The 35mm is actually longer than the 25 and the 16mm, although the focus gearing lines up perfectly. It might be necessary, however, to adjust your matte box to account for the extended lens hood. If the strength of the Miki 12mm was capturing wide establishing shots or allowing you to film in small environments, the beauty of the 35mm, like any portrait lens, is faces and details. As a medium telephoto lens, you can shoot beautiful close-ups, mid shots and long shots with no distortion and great background separation. It's a very flexible lens, and while the 16 or the 25 might be more useful everyday lenses, this is perfect when you need a little further reach or a flatter, more portrait type shot. In our review of the 12mm, we said one of the strengths of the Miki Cinema lenses is that they are part of a set. While this is probably not the first lens in the Miki range you should own, it's a great addition to the lineup.